We're going over the if structure today. We're going to get straight into it on line 24. So how the if structure works is it's going to say if, which is a keyword, and then it's going to have an expression between these parentheses. And then if that expression is true, it's going to execute a statement in between these brackets. So that is the basic if structure of that. Before I get into a little more in depth, I'm going to explain what uh, relational operators are, which are these. And so these operators make it to where you can use different expressions in the if statement, and you can check different things. And there is one of them I do want to explain, which is our first focus moment, and it is our equal to operator. So you can see I have two equal signs. So what we're asking is if the variable number is set to one, or is it equal to one? Usually we do one equal sign and that is wrong. So what you're doing right here is you're setting, you're initializing the variable number to one. We just wanna check if it is one and not change the variable. So we're gonna do two equal signs. And you kinda of need to wrap your head around that and how that works because we're gonna be dealing with that a lot. So in this first if statement, basically what we're doing is we're gonna say if number is set to one, we want to execute this line right here and tell the console to print out the number is one. So the number is one and we're gonna go ahead and run it. And you can see here that it does say the number is one. Now below on line 28, this is the relation operator of the not sign. So we use the exclamation point, and what that means is if the number is not one, we want to print out that the number is not one. So this can be used in a lot of ways, but what we're saying is if it's not equal to one. So if we set one to two, we can run it, and it's going to say the number is not one. And now below, another if statement is we're going to say if the if number is less than one, we want to increase the variable number by one. So we're going to say if it's less than one, number equals number plus one. So we're going to make it zero. What we'll do is, and below here, what we'll do is we'll print out the variable number, show you that it does increase by one. Change it to zero, so we'll run it. So we're going to say the number is not one, which is not, and then we're going to print out one. We're going to move on to an if else structure, and we're going to change it up a little bit. So you can see here, you can also check for string variables and car variables. So you can see if the letter is equal to a certain letter that you want. And what we're doing is we're going to create a variable called letter and put Y. We're going to say if letter is set to Y, we want to print out the letter is Y. Now this else right here is a keyword. And basically what this means is if this statement or if this expression is false, when in doubt, we're going to print this no matter what. So if this is true, we're just going to print this, which is the letter is Y. If it's false, we're going to print out the letter is not Y. So it should just print out the letter is Y. So it says the letter is Y. And we're going to change the letter to N. We're going to run it again. Now it says the letter is not Y. So just remember that the else is when all else fails, it's going to execute this line. And it does not have an expression in it because basically it's like a backup thing. So we're going to go move into the nested if structure on line 47. So when I say nested if structure, what I mean is there is a if statement inside an if statement. And what we're doing is we're using JOPS and Pane to show a couple messages. And so we have a variable age and gender, and age is 23, gender is male. And we're going to say if age is less than or equal to 18. So if age is 18, it's still going to execute these lines. So if that expression is true, it's going to move on to, to what's in between these brackets. And so it's going to move on to this next if statement. And so now it's going to check if the gender is equal to M, which is male. And if that is false, then it's going to check if the gender is equal to female. 
So just remember that if this statement is false, it's going to skip all this, whatever between the brackets of this statement. If it is true, it's going to check another time for these variables. And then if, if all else fails, we're going to do this only. So if age is less than 18, we're going to print out, sorry, you are too young to qualify. So right now, age is 23. And what it's going to do is it's going to bypass this one because it's true. It's greater than 18. Then it's going to check if the gender is male, which it is. And it's going to show you can be in the MBA. So we'll run it. It's going to show you can be in the MBA. Now, if we change it to F, it's going to say you can be in the W MBA. Run it. And it pops up. And then if all else fails, it's going to say you're too young to qualify. So we'll put 17. It's going to pop up. You were too young to qualify in J option pane. There we go. Next, we're going to go over the if else if structure. And that's a little more complicated, but you can kind of wrap your head around it pretty quick. So we created a variable called grade, which is 90. And we're going to check if that grade is an A, B, C, D, or F. So normally, in the regular if structure, and the if statements, um, it's going to check everything every time. So even if this is true, it's still going to check whether if that gender variable is F. And the same thing up here. Even if number is equal to 1, it's still going to check these two if statements. So if we want to bypass that, we use the if else if structure. So we create, created a variable called grade. And what we're saying is if grade is less than 60, we're going to say your grade is an F. If it's less than 70, then your grade is in D. So basically what this means is if grade is less than 60, it's going to print out this and it's going to skip all of this, which is good because if we just put if and we took out the else, it would print out every single thing. It would print out F, D, C, B, and A if your grade is less than 60 because it's going to check it every time. But what we're saying here is if grade is less than 60, then print out this. Else, if grade is less than 70, then print out this. And then if it reaches this expression and it's true, it's going to skip the rest of all the statements. So we're going to run it one time and I'll show you. So right now it's 90, so it's to print out your grade as an A. Get past the J option pane. So your grade is an A. So we're good there. And now let's say we do 70. And we run it. Your grade is a C. Now I do want to show you if you do take the else's out, what it will do. So we'll take those out. And we'll save it and we'll run it again. So if grade is a 70. We're going to press OK. So now you can see that your grade is a C. Whoops. So your grade is a C and your grade is a B, which is false. But you can see what it's doing. So it's going to skip this because it's false. And then it's going to skip this because it's false. And then if it's less than 80, which it is, it's grade is C. But it's also less than 90, so it's going to print out this one as well. And that's why we use the if else statement. So another thing, I'll add those back in. So another thing I do want to show you is how we catch errors with the last else statement. So in this case, we're going to add this. We're going to say if grade is less than or equal to 100, we're going to print out your grade as an A. And then we're going to add one else, one more else statement, not an else if. And we're going to catch errors with this. And what I mean is if all this fails, then we know that something is wrong with the variable grade, not the actual F statement. So if all else fails, we're going to print out the system, or whoops. We're going to print out the grade is invalid. I'm just typing too fast today. That's the T. So we're going to print out the grade is invalid. So we're going to make grade 110. And so it's none of those, so all these statements will be false. 
But when in doubt, it's going to execute that else statement no matter what, but only if all of those are false. So we'll save it and run it. That's going to print out your grade, the grade is invalid. So that's how we catch errors with the if else statement. And now we can print back to the user to input another grade. The last thing I do want to show you is the uh, Boolean variable when we use if statements. So, so we're going to create a bool, we're going to name it is true, and we're going to set it to true. So we're going to create a Boolean variable, and we're going to name it is true, and we're going to set it to true. So this is how we use if statements for Boolean variables. So we're going to say if is true, and we're going to print out the var is true. So you can see how there is no expression in the uh, between these two parentheses. So another focus moment is if you just put the Boolean variable in the expression, basically all you're saying is if this variable is true, we want to print out what's in between the brackets. Now if you put the not operator, now what you're saying is if this statement is not true, if it's false, then we want to print out what's in between the brackets. So I'll show you one time. Right now it is true. So it should say the var is true. The var is true. And we'll put false. Run it again. And it's going to print out nothing. There we go. Now we'll show you the not operator. So we'll print out if it is not true, which it is false, so it's not true, then the var is true. Good to go there. The very last thing I do want to touch on is brackets. Brackets are very important in if statements because if your brackets are wrong, then it's going to execute the wrong line of codes. So just remember always after you type if in the expression, you're always going to have those brackets. Now you can do it either way. You can do it like that where it's a little bit neater, or you can just do it right after the parentheses. Just remember after every if statement, you will always have the brackets.